doing on this video? Welcome to a little walkabout on my patio while we're on the right side of the weather because what is happening on the other side of the building is very concerning to say the least. It is time to button down the hatches but before I do that I wanted to enjoy the sunshine together with you. The coming week is going to be an abomination in my opinion not just for me but for my orchids. Birds are not aware of what is coming apparently. Spring is here today but gone tomorrow. Right now we're under the covered portico that faces south and I have all my orchids outside until such a time that either it starts raining or the temperatures are dropping. These would be the last to come in because here I do have them under cover, giving me the luxury to hustle all the other candidates indoors so that they don't get wet and then enter the cold and enter all sorts of problems. I hope that you enjoy this little walkabout. I will do my best to keep my gimbal straight as possible, but I want to show you the signs of spring in my orchid collection. So let's go over to the east side and have a look, see what's going on over there. Here we are on the east side, occupying a patio chair, my nobilies. And here is the one, the variety Cuxonianum from Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents over there yonder in Portugal. Fernanda, check this out. I hope that you have time to watch this video. But here are the blooms that you have cultivated that I am going to be able to enjoy in the near future. Isn't that cool? I want to say thank you very, very much for giving me this treat of an orchid that I get to enjoy pretty soon. But not only that, look at the base. There's two new growths already starting and there's another one back there. So this orchid is doing fabulous, which I am very happy about. Next door is a no ID commercial Dendrobium nobly hybrid that I honestly just love for its freesia like fragrance. And the buds are going nuts. I've got buds on old canes, like very old canes, not even last year's canes, and also buds happening now on last year's canes. This is going to be a beautiful spectacle and fragrance to boot. And not only that, we already have new growths coming in at the base. There's growths all around the orchid. next to this gorgeous cymbidium. Oh my goodness. Baby, you are gonna get blasted as from tomorrow and I'm so sorry, but wow, you looked beautiful while you were in bloom. But next to you is also another orchid from Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents. This is Pletia striata. Now, at the beginning of the season when she was breaking dormancy, I counted eight growths and I was super happy. Now I have 10, Aha! 10 growths on this gorgeous orchid. I wonder if she's going to bloom on one of them. It would be nice, but my challenge this year is to keep those leaves clean and not get them frazzled by the sun. We'll have to work our way around this one and figure it out, but look at it. Occupying another chair is Colmenara Masai Red. Oh, love it. I can see this orchid from where I am sat in the living room. And I took a little bit more time in the blooms video to show you just how gorgeous she is. But what I do want to focus on is my Fires Tancavilia here. Despite looking a little bit ratty and worse for wear, because my conditions aren't to her liking at all, with the exception of plenty of light. Her spikes are really progressing very, very well. When I say spikes, here's one, and here is the other, next to a very ratty looking leaf. But hey, spikes, at least she blooms for me and I love her for it. Then we can go down and the next growths that have been stagnant over the winter, they are on the move. Wonderful, even back here. Should be interesting to see where this one is going because I think I may not have enough space based on her growth direction. We had an in-depth look at my summer bloomers. 
they are in for a very dark ride for the next eight days that I can see on the forecast. Underneath, I have the Van der Glossum, Zovenicofio Humbertiana, the Sitorcus Preternisa, and there is my Renanthera Monachica. The spike of the Van der Glossum is looking gorgeous. And I think that in the coming week, I may just get them to bloom. I'm very happy that the buds haven't blasted because these orchids have been coming in and out every single day, spikes and blooms or not. Light is most important thing. Now, my Sirtorcus here is showing signs of cold damage at the end. I may need to intervene, seeing as it's not going to get warm very, very soon. And you can see the wet spot over there. And I may need to just cut that off and protect it with some cinnamon. So that little gaggle of orchid top orchids used to live over the winter here on this rack when they were outdoors. But you can see full sun now. Hi, hi. <laughs> you can see full sun now. So that would be too hot for them already. So here I have my Coilostylus ciliaris variety or steadii and my Myrmacophila tibicinis, enjoying blasting sun. Much, much needed. These mounts are currently on the south hedge, but facing north because that is the facade is at its brightest. So they're getting a lot of light, but in bright shade, as you can see. And I've got my Eonopsis popcorn haruri. Well, I've lost several growths on this one. I still have one spike that I may be able to salvage. I'm not entirely sure that this is going to make it because of what we are expecting the next coming days. Tolumnia hoxonia is really, really doing well. I've got new growth coming here. A new fan is trying to come up right there. Got roots finally going into the hob material. I lost a fan or two down here, losing a third one. I'm just hoping that all this is going to correct itself once I can really, really knock some seaweed and calcium into it on a regular basis. I've been very tentative at this point in time to do that, but hey, I'm seeing some signs of progress. And then over here is my Brassavola fragilaris. And look, remember that growth I told you was very surprised to see very, very early days in the year? Well, it's still at that stage, but something is happening here with this orchid because there's another little nubbin starting to swell in the back here. That wasn't there a couple of days ago. The orchids are responding to the longer days. The temperature is what's confusing them. And this was the one that was resurrected from the dead, a twig that I almost threw out. This should be Lelia perinii. I cannot be 100% sure because it never bloomed for me, but it's doing well. It's also responding to something with nature changing day lengths and it is extending roots. So at any moment, I'm kind of hoping that an eye will develop and that we can get a new growth started or maybe four the way it did just before I was about to bin it. And here's little how we are a lava burst. Still hanging on, still hanging on. I don't see any issues happening here at all. Very tiny little recovery growth, but we've got roots in the scrubby pad. Well, let's see what it does this season. I'm very surprised this little guy is still around. What a little trooper. <laughs> Along the same side of the hedge, I've got Stan the man. Right, we are losing some leaves. They are older leaves, that's okay. There's no signs of new growth at this point in time, but all the new growths that were maturing over the winter, they have matured. So now it's just a question of waiting for the second flush of new growths and keeping it nice and hydrated. Yes, it is too cold for this orchid in my climate. It has adjusted somewhat. It will never look perfect, but it does bloom for me and those blooms I will not be without. Big, red, spicy cinnamon fragrance. So as long as it's managing to hold on to the conditions that I have for it, even though when it rains it is cold, it seems to be doing okay and it's creating its own little environment down here. The moss is growing over old bulbs. 
I have picked away at any excess hob material because I don't need it anymore. That was there to keep the humidity up when I did the massive divide and took it apart, etc. Now it's got all this going on. So bit by bit, I've been taking away hob material because I don't want any future spikes to be affected. And it is on this stand for now, simply because it's easy to reach and take care of. Sorry, we've just got a cloud that came through, but you can see what it's doing. It's growing out from underneath as well. In about three years, this basket will have to be dug out if you want to see it. Not that I intend to dig out the San Hopia anymore. It can do what it wants with this basket. It's also ready to be hung up on its little hook on the east side. So we're good to go whenever the weather decides to play ball. And then we're on the west side. Where the remaining of my big banders live, over there. And the Colcoglossum Kimbilianum as well. They stay there. They don't come inside. But the stand here, the whole rack, normally should live on the east side. And I'm looking forward to be able to move it back there. But in the meantime, on the west side, this is where the first sunlight hits. It is the warmest. It has reflecting light from the facade opposite. It's a little pocket of warmth back here. All these come inside every day when the temperature drops. I'm very, very excited about my Myrmecocatlia Louise Fuchs here. This growth has been maturing throughout the winter. Now I am waiting for roots on this growth. My Lelia amethyst, of course, I mean, you know, I was excited to see something happening in the middle of this growth. That has stopped for now. And I don't blame it. I would stop doing whatever I was doing as well, which I'm going to do in the coming week. It's going to be awful. But what I also wanted to show you, because here's another orchid I got from Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents. And this is the growth that was starting when I received the orchid. And look, she is maturing. She's got a sheath. Whether she will bloom or not is another thing, but she's looking mighty fine. I love it. The Mimocatlia here was also from Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents. My collection, well, a lot of it came from Portugal, you would think, right? <laughs> and then here we have everybody just biding their time. The new growth on my tuberculata right here is extending, but definitely not fast. I wouldn't either, considering the conditions. Very pleased about my Leptotis bicolor from Tokyo World Mark. All these growths here, they might be a little bit smaller than what I got. <laughs> I don't have the ideal conditions for this one, but maybe they will bloom for us. It might be, we don't know. Leptotis bicolor just has to take its time, but she is completely transitioned. She's a happy orchid. She's growing new roots as well. So as far as I'm concerned, if you're not going to bloom, grow me some new roots and we shall be friends. Something else I'm very excited about back here is my Cattleya leopoldii. I have a history with Cattleya leopoldii, but this growth is doing beautifully. It started a while ago, as you can see, but it continues to grow despite the adverse conditions. And if my memory doesn't fail me, it's also a little bit chunkier of a little bit more substance than the previous growth here. So we are starting to mature a little bit more this year. That's amazing. And my Cattleya lobata growth here that was growing throughout the winter is also looking fine. I have no problem with the fact that the growth is the same height as the previous one. And that makes me happy because this growth developing through the winter, I had my doubts, but nope, we can compare the sizes. It's going to be just fine. Okay, this is a shocker, but not for me. This is Ancelia Africana. And this one hasn't been with me a full season just yet. It came from Africa during the summer of 2021, I believe, not entirely sure, but around that time. And you can see the leaves. I have another on the top, top rack. I have all the Ancelia Africanas. They're exposed to the direct sun. And then, of course, it is possible that they get a little bit too cold because up there, 
there's also quite a lot of wind. But what I want to explain here is I am radical when it comes to acclimating my orchids. If I don't know my orchids, if they are new, I will protect them if they are seedlings. But when they are strong and vigorous growing orchids, I prefer to go the harsh way, you know, tough love. I get to know them better and quicker this way. So this one here is the buffalo crossed with Leo. And yes, we have sun damage and cold damage. The cold damage would look like this and then perpetuate the problem by putting it in blistering sun. It does that. I am not very concerned about this. These growths were all grown since this orchid arrived and it was grown on in shade all the time. So clearly it is not expecting to be put into the harsh winter sun. And I say harsh because the atmosphere is cleaner, even though the breeze is a little cooler. But if there is no breeze, sunburn can still happen. But once again, I'm trying to get it acclimated because where this one is going to go on this rack on the east patio, it's going to get blasting sun. And I want to know if I can push it and have it live there or if this one is a little bit more finicky and prefers a little bit more shade. That is what I'm doing here. So if in future you see my Ancelia Africanas, you will probably think, oh my goodness, what is she doing? Well, tough love. I acclimate them as harsh as possible to then know when to pull back. Also, these are young growths. And if and when they drop their leaves, all that will be part of history. On the lower shelf, I have my Ampuyathea Pink Dreamer coming into bloom with two spikes. Very excited about that. They will probably start to bloom while the orchid is inside in the next eight days. But I also have some exciting news because my Renanthera Citrina over here is starting on her first spike. Now, I'm saying first spike because this spike is going to take a long time to bloom, but she is spiking very, very early. So I'm thinking, you're going to give me two this year? That would be amazing if this one even makes it because this is a warm and hot grower and none of that is going to happen for the next eight days. Oh, I have to take that little Phalaenopsis. She's on a CalMag soap. So that is my visual reminder that I need to empty that pot. And down here, I like various little seedlings. I wouldn't even call them juveniles. But here's a Cattleya Maxima that I got from the Orchid Room and Michael McCarthy, Melissa Walker. And let me get down and show you because she's on the move. Isn't that great? Gifted orchids, when they are responding and they stay alive, fighting the odds. Look at that new roots and an eye is moving maybe two growths this year <gasps> wouldn't that be exciting but then we also have this one is a little dawiana seedling and why am i speaking quietly because <laughs> they're babies anyway this one is a dawiana seedling look at that two eyes do you think i'm gonna get two eyes to move so this one here is already on the move sorry for the jiggle i'm doing my best this one here is already on the move. This one is chubby. Uh, would I be so lucky? <laughs> Chantilly lace twinkle back there. The yellow leaves. Um, yeah, we're working on it. Other than that, my Luminosa is fabulous. No sign of growth from her just yet. While we're down here, Jomelia aborescence. Look, look at this orchid. Oh, I love fighters. Look at all these plants that she's developing at her base. I mean, these have already started like some of them a year and a half ago, but look at now, even more are coming out. And she has grown so beautifully over the winter. Oh, it's going to be wonderful to see Caspar again. Gorgeous. Oh, I love orchids that do this for me when they are not in a happy place. I am really taking my time, can you tell? <laughs> Breathing in the last warm air, enjoying what's going on out here. Thank you so much for being here. Look, this is my Dendrobium tortile. These spikes are three years old. It's gonna be a show because not only am I getting blooms on spikes that are way, way old here as well, 
but also on the spikes that are two years old. So it's going to be a double whammy this time around. Absolutely amazing. So happy and she's pushing hard and fast. Invading the privacy of my Gracilis. This is Lelia Gracilis, also from the Orchid Room, Michael McCarthy and Melissa Walker. I think down there, at least that one little bulb, I can see that the outer sheath is bulging out, so there's a new growth on the way there. My goodness, this orchid is precious to me, so keep growing, little one, keep growing. The other ones are still in a state of rest, from what I can tell. I've lost quite a few leaves. I don't see any signs of new growths, but you know, just ticking over. They're all okay. I still have something that looks like a spike maybe forming here, but that's taken forever. Whether it's just a little tease for what's to come on the next growth, I don't know. But everybody here is just teeny tiny, waiting to go on the table where my summer bloomers are. The same down here, just waiting. A clandier there, waiting, please live. <laughs> This is my Sophronitis coccinia 2.0, losing a back leaf to be expected. But look at those two new growths. Very, very slow in getting going, but they are still there. And then we have other little ones that are waking up right here. This is Sincorana, also growing a new growth, but it's not the Nina. This is the normal Sincorana. Beautiful new growth coming there. Love it. Sorry about the dusty leaves. I don't fiddle with my orchids that much during the winter, except the ones that come indoors. And if I see pests, that's when I start to fiddle. I'm so wary of what I'm putting them through that, yeah, I try to keep well away from them, not do any damage. Look at that. Ooh, it's like Diana, look at you. Beautiful, upright, gorgeous growths coming there. But this little one over here is still resting. This is crispy labia. Maybe we can discover a growth together. Can we? Shall we? Keep turning without breaking a leaf in the back. Nope. Still resting. You keep resting. Just stay alive, please. A little Kingianum, again from Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents. A little bloom is holding on lovely, doubly. This here is the Sincorana that is named after me, Nina crossed with Bella Vista. So there we go, growing roots from that mature little growth that was busy throughout the winter. The other ones are still resting. There's Pupuracea in the background with her first growth since she has arrived in my care. Here's my little speciosum. The leaves from the new growth of last season are starting to green up, especially this one right here. When that happens, it is working on getting another new growth started. So maybe in two months, we'll see the signs of a new growth. <laughs> Rhincodendrum cavaliata in verde, new growth. That's the first one. Usually this orchid gives me two, but one always starts a little earlier. That then doesn't bloom for me. And then the second one starts a little bit later in the season, and then I get blooms. I wonder if it's gonna break its cycle this year. Here is the Panarica Rasavole, that is the struggling one. It's a copper victim. Still managing to get that growth to extend, and it's growing roots. Besides the fact that it already started on a root set, it is growing another root. And if my eye doesn't fail me, I have to check what that is right there on the white velamen and see if that isn't scale. Give me a moment. I can see it on the screen. I can't see it with the naked eye. It was scale. Was the key word. And now I'm going to show you something that I've been meaning to get rid of for quite some weeks now and just have never really pulled the trigger, but it is done. In my head it is done and I wanted to get rid of this orange nugget Dresden right here because you see the leaves. I'm tired of seeing them. I can't get them to grow clean. This orchid has got issues, lots of issues. But anyway, 
I wanted to get rid of them before they bloomed. Because <laughs> the blooms are pretty and they smell like apricots. <laughs> and it would, uh, of course, make me think, now nah, I'm going to hold on and do better. But this orchid, there's a problem. So we're going to enjoy the blooms because despite all odds, there she is. And a pop of color this time of year. I'm just going to take it. But yeah, these orchids are already out of my collection. My mind has been made up after they've bloomed out. My blooming alley only has two orchids in bloom, and that is my little Lelia alvarenguensis, first time bloomer for me. And boy, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, fabulous. Oh, just fabulous. Third bloom is opening, but she has to face that way, just to make sure that the blooms all open in one direction. Okay back bracing a little bit of sunshine but a little bit lower down we have pastoral innocence with a new growth woohoo that is looking promising back there i hope i can get the camera through you see that sheath well that's been there for a long time that's lelia purpurata variety back poisery thank goodness that growth is still moving very slowly i would be too and i will be too for the next coming week but it is a sheath nonetheless. Whether it's going to amount to anything, who cares? The orchid is alive. And here is my Dinard Blue Heaven. Beautiful. Oh, when this orchid starts a new growth, look at it. But uh, <clears throat> the greedy orchid grower is wondering, oh, why aren't you doing that with the second eye over there? Yes, hello. I like the first one, full of happy sap. Yum, yum. But what's going on here? Come on, you can give me two, you can give me two. In the back, right there, I'm going to see that I can maybe highlight the screen a little bit. That is Cattleya iricolor. The left growth, the new one, grew for the last 12 months, as iricolor does. But on the bottom, there is also a new growth moving, which is wonderful. I'll see you in March of 2023. <laughs> Here is my Dawiana, the biggest one that I have. When it's going to bloom, I do not know. But as long as it's alive, I've got an eye moving on the right there. And I have a several eyes that are looking like, hmm, who is going to move first? How about you all move at the same time? That would be very much appreciated. Here is a gorgeous little one. Melissa Brianne Dark. Just opening and she's been living outside throughout this winter. Holding on, doing well. And I've got four spikes. One, two, three, four. Her bloom just started to open yesterday. Could I have, there we go. Could I have a focus, please? Oh, a gorgeous fragrance on this one as well. So these are the two that are gracing my blooming alley. Not to be left out, I hope you can see that because I can hardly see anything, but um, I've got two spikes on my Zygopetalum Trozy Blue, and if it won't focus, trust me, they're there. I couldn't believe it myself, so I had to look three times to double check, but <laughs> even if it's out of focus, they are there. Another Rapiculus Lelia that is not going to be outdone by the length of the spike of the Alvarenguensis. <laughs> Lelia Flava. She's all the way down there. Not a very big orchid. She's a big Rapiculus orchid, occupying a space where my tall top guns are because of this. Yay, she's gonna be a first time bloomer for me. I think it's amazing. It takes forever. The first time I saw signs of a spike on the two that are developing these long spikes was back at the beginning of December. Ushu Glory on the move. Thank you. Junye Good Life on the move. Thank you. Golf Green Hair Pig, the second growth that developed over the winter and is still growing. Still growing. That's all I can ask of it. Zagarig Wax on the move. Thank you. Can't say I'm happy about the size of this growth. I don't like that it's so skinny. I have to keep an eye on Zagarig Wax. Bifolia Diva, repotted and divided two years ago. 
probably still sulking. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Siamese Gold Kiwi on the move, only from one lead. So, well, well, we'll take it. Katlia Gurigan on the move. She's been doing so for a while, but again, prefers it a little warmer, just like me. So not moving very fast, but on the move. Also on the move, but in a little bit different way, is another Lelia Purpurata variety of Ecoisery. I really need to clean this orchid up. You can see why in the back and you can see why in the front. Oh my goodness, this is such a beautiful sight. I love it, but I can't touch her now. I really do have to wait for that weather to break and have consistent warmer temperatures. But what a shame, look at this. Ooh, I would have loved to have done this sooner, but we have a sheath. Ooh, with yum, happy sap. Another Lelia Purpurata, this would be variety striata. I already would have loved to have cleaned this pot out as well. As you can see, we're past the stage where I feel comfortable because roots get messed with much, much more when they've already extended to this degree. I prefer to work at nubbin stage and we have a gorgeous sheath. But this sheath has been gorgeous throughout the entire winter. <laughs> Oh, but it's beautiful and it's green and oh, I love it. Totally a statement sheath. Wonderful. I hope you enjoyed this walkabout with me. It's like a breath of fresh air being able to take my time. I thoroughly enjoyed your company, pretending that you're here with me and we're just having a little chin wag amongst orchid aficionados and geek out over new growths. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On that one condition though, that you stay safe, please. I would love to see you in the next video. Take care, bye.